Welcome to Morse Chapel. Are you new here? Let us know you stopped by. Fill out our online connect card at morschapel.org forward slash connect. Check us out online on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. Need prayer? Email us at prayer at morsechapel.org. Do you have youth or kids? So do we. Check out Morse Chapel Youth every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And Kids Connect every second and fourth Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Here's a few things coming up. Well, good morning and welcome to Moore's Chapel. We are so excited that each and every one of you have chosen to join us today. If this is your first time, welcome. We are a church from the little ones to the seniors and everyone in between. However you are today is perfect because God will meet us each where we are. Our mission here at Moore's Chapel is to reach the surrounding communities, Cecil County and beyond in Delaware and Pennsylvania for Jesus Christ. And our vision is witnessing thousands saved, healed, delivered, and set free to be the people that God is creating you and me to be. And you know, when we accomplish that on any level at all, that what that translates into is transform people for Jesus, transform people whose lives are different, um, and they have a personal relationship with God. So um, we're just so excited about our vision as we see people being transformed for Jesus Christ. We have, um, I have one major announcement today, and that is our Connecting Grow. It is starting this Wednesday night at 6.30 here at the church, and we're having a second group that'll start next Sunday here at the church at 6.30. We're encouraging everyone to come to this uh, discipleship uh, Connect and Grow. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to learn a lot of great things. And uh, we're going to learn to be more like Jesus during this class. So we pray that you will um, sign up. Thank you for those who have already signed up. We're so excited to get started. And uh, for those who have not, I'll send another email out. Uh, and and um, Or you can email me directly or info at morschapel.org if you want to join us uh, via Zoom if we don't have your contact information. So again, amazing class, Wednesday nights. 6.30 to 8 p.m. starting this Wednesday, and then we'll have the same class also starting on Sunday. Two options to connect and grow. That's all I have for announcements. Come on up, Peter. Peter's got some stuff he's going to tell us about the youth, so come on up, Peter. Good morning, Morse Chapel youth and parents of youth. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal Sunday morning. You guys are awake and ready to hear the word of God today. Um, so I just have a few announcements for youth. Um, so as we do every single Wednesday, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we are having youth group. And God is doing some phenomenal things in our youth students. He's really uh, working in them and also working in my life as I see them grow and develop as young men and women of God. It's just such a blessing to be able to go through the word of God with them and teach them and lead them, but also see how they're teaching me and, and growing my faith as well. 
So that's this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. But we're also having youth Bible studies every single Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And you don't want to miss that because that's an opportunity for youth to be able to learn the Word of God and to be, really be able to process it themselves. It gives an opportunity to, um, for us to have conversations together about the Word of God and learn how to read it. Um, so that's, that's all I have for announcements for youth. Please bring your youth out and invite youth because we want to grow the next generation here at Morse Chapel. All right. I hope you guys have a phenomenal Sunday morning. That's it. All right. Thank you, Peter. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. So we just say, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Just touch each and every one of us at the sound of my voice right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Quiet us down so we can hear, uh, the, hear what you want to say to us today. We thank you that you are the living God that we can have a personal, intimate relationship with you and that you did, that is your heart's desire to have a relationship with your children. So God, we thank you uh, for that. Lord, uh, right now we uh, pray that each and every uh, heart is wide open to receive all that you have for today. We pray that our eyes and our ears, uh, that we're, we're seeing what you want us to see, we're hearing what you want us to hear, Lord, that we are just fully ready to receive from you, from the worship, the prayers, the preaching, just everything, God. Lord, uh, we also pray that for anyone who is struggling with anything, Lord, whether it's finances a relationship, um, a, a work issue, or a relational issue just with um, somebody that's on your heart. Uh, so God, we just ask that you would uh, meet us right in the middle of that, whatever it is we're struggling with, Lord, and that you will uh, speak to us. You will give us your counsel, your wisdom, and uh, you will help us to know uh, what even just the next step is in this area of our life. And for, for those who are hurting, Lord, we just pray that you would just wrap your loving arms around them, that you would just hold them tight, Lord, and let them know how much you love them. Lord, we give you uh, all of the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in through and among us. And we pray this in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Now we're going to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray the most uh, well-known and also powerful prayers. You know, one of the most powerful prayers I believe that we can pray today. So let's uh, pray as we pray the Lord's prayer. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Oh, you, there's no one. 
Father, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to sing your praises. We pray, Father, that you will lead, guide, and erect our paths and help us to do your will. We pray, Father, that you'll bless the service today, Father, and that there's one that here doesn't know you, that they find you. Just thank you, Father, for your many blessings. We pray that, Father, we would try to do our best to measure up, that we never can, but we just pray, Father, that you will love us anyway. We thank you, Father, for the things that you've given us, lead, guide, and erect us, and lead our paths. In Jesus' name, amen. First love, it's only one way to the Father, 
and he's calling out to us. To the captive it looks like freedom, to the orphan it feels like home. To the skeptic it might sound crazy, to believe in a God who loves. In a world where hearts are breaking, and we're lost in the mess we've made. Like a blinding light in the dead of night, it's a gospel. It's the gospel that makes a way. It's the gospel that makes a way. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I. Deserve the fall. They called me out of the darkness and carried me to the cross. In a moment, my eyes were open. In a moment, my heart was changed. Like a blinding light in the dead of night, it's the gospel. To the captive, it looks like freedom. To the orphan, it feels like home. To the skeptic, it might sound crazy. To believe in a God who loves In a world where hearts are breaking And we're lost in the mess we've made Like the blinding light in the dead of night It's the gospel, the gospel that makes the way It's the gospel that makes the way It's the gospel that makes the way Okay, so today's scripture reading is from Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are still speaking to us today. That your word is still being revealed, Lord, in our hearts, God, in our lives. That your spirit, God, can make known revelations, God, from this word that you gave us so long ago. But he can also give us revelations particular to our lives, God. I thank you. God, for the revelations you've given me, God. And I pray that today you would speak, Lord, to everybody who needs to hear a word of encouragement, 
who needs um, life and hope and it's spoken into them. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit would speak over them right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today we are starting a new series called Mobilize. On March 16th, God woke me up in the middle of the night and I kept hearing over and over, it is time for the church to mobilize. It is time for the church to mobilize. It is time for the church to mobilize. And the impression was so strong that I filmed my first ever two minute YouTube video and sent it out to you all in the congregation. The word mobilize means to put into movement, to marshal something such as resources for action, to bring people together for action, to assemble and make ready for war duty, to organize or prepare something such as a group of people for a purpose. So this past week, God gave me confirmation and clarity regarding this word that he gave me on March 16th. Church renewal and revival, I believe, along with many others, is coming on a large scale, and we have to get ready. We have to get ready. Some of the getting ready means that we need to learn some new skills and get more proficient at some core things that every single disciple of Jesus needs to know. This includes things like how to hear God's voice, how to pray for the sick, how to make disciples, how to grow more in love with God and other people. So we're going to be digging into some of these things over the next several weeks. Today we're going to begin with... um, the topic of learning how to hear God's voice. Learning how to hear God's voice is foundational. It is such a foundational thing to our walk with God. Hearing God's voice is something that we can all learn how to better hear him, whatever whatever capability we're at right now in hearing God's voice, we can all learn and grow in it. Everyone, every single one of us, hears God's voice. I just want to start saying that by saying that every single one of us hears God's voice because God speaks to his people, you and me. He speaks to us all the time. You know, the question is, is do we know how to distinguish God's voice from all of the other voices speaking to us? Because there's a lot of voices speaking to us. And um, some of those voices include like social media, TV, coworkers, our boss, the news, parents, uh, children. I mean, there's, there's a whole slew of different voices that speak to us during the day. And then a lot of us, we have this ongoing dialogue in our head, you know, like where we're thinking things and even our own heads, like where we're, we're, we're even speaking to ourselves. So, um, but the thing about it is, is God is speaking and he wants to speak to you and he, he wants to speak to you and say something to you today. So one of the best uh, teachers that I have found on this topic is Mark and Patty Verkler. They wrote a book called Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice. I suggest that if this is definitely something that you want to grow in, I suggest that you get a copy of that book and read it. And again, it's called Four Keys to Hearing God's Voice by Mark and Patty Verkler. His teaching is one of the best out there that I know of. Hearing God's voice is something that every believer, I'm going to say it again, every believer in Christ can do. You know, God has been speaking to his people since the beginning of time. God 
uh, has been speaking to people, and it's recorded all throughout the Bible. I mean, the Bible has story after story about how God was speaking to his people from Adam and Eve, who spoke with God in the Garden of Eden, to um, Abraham, that God said, you know, I want you to go to this country that I'm going to show you. You know, God spoke to him. Um, Even if you think about the books of the Bible, I mean, God spoke to them and told them what to write down. So, um, so many places. And God speaks to his people today. Jesus said to him, Jesus said himself, my sheep hear my voice. You know, when we become a believer and we invite Jesus into our hearts, one of the things that we do is we start to hear his voice. Now, I like with me, when I first became a Christian, I didn't understand how God spoke. So I really didn't hear his voice. But um, until much later when God actually did speak to me anyway, I don't want to get running off on a rabbit trail right now. But it's, it's, it's hard unless you've been taught sometimes to, to recognize and hear God's voice. So we're going to do a little bit of that today. In John chapter 10, verses 2 through 5, we read, The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And Jesus said directly in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. As Jesus As Jesus' sheep, you and I, as his sheep, God speaks to us regularly. You can hear God speak to you um, every day. And again, we're going to pray and believe that you're going to hear from God today. To do this, we must learn to distinguish God's voice from all of some of the other voices speaking. And I would just want to mention like some of the ways that God speaks. And hopefully, even as I'm sharing this, you're going to start to recognize, oh, yeah, I heard God speak to me that way. Um, So let's look at a couple of the many ways that God speaks. The first is through scripture. You know, of course, he speaks through his word. But have you ever had the um, opportunity when you were reading scripture and like a a verse or a word just kind of jumped off at the page at you and, and it was like, oh, wow. I never saw that in there before, and it's something that God wanted to highlight to you. Has that ever happened? Uh, Another way God speaks is he gives us impressions or discernment about a situation. Um, One time I was trying to uh, go on a trip with a company that I was working for in um, Maine, and I was trying to get airplane tickets for that. And it just wasn't working. My computer wasn't like working at the time. And I was like, I just felt like, God, do you want me to just drive? I mean, you know, so I, I was like, I said, all right, I'm going to drive. And as soon as I did that, I just had peace over me. And it turned out to be a God thing. I had uh, two other people who were um, wanting to go to the same the same conference that I was going to and they didn't have a ride and they didn't, they weren't able to fly. So I was like, you know what? I got plenty of room in my car. And it turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful time. So God speaks through impressions, discernments. He gives us that peace that passes all understanding. That's another way that he speaks to us. He speaks to us in dreams. Have you had a dream where you felt like, you know, God was speaking to you or in visions, you know, a vision could be, Uh, You know, while, you know, you close your eyes and you see something or sometimes I call them where I have these flash pictures where I'll just see a picture of something real quick. Um, Or God, you know, maybe um, you've you've seen uh, other things in your in your mind's eye that you feel like that's, you know, that's how God was speaking to you. An audible voice. Sometimes God speaks in an audible voice, although from what I hear from people, that's a little bit less frequent. Uh, but I do remember one time 
Uh, I was even, God even speaks to non-believers. He speaks to everybody. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Sometimes we, they don't recognize it until later when they actually meet Jesus and have a relationship with him. But years and years ago, I was driving down this hill real fast. Shouldn't have been going that fast in the rain and it was really foggy. And um, out of nowhere, I had music blaring in my car. Out of nowhere, as I'm going down this hill at like one or two o'clock in the morning, um, I hear this and I'm in the car alone, this voice that shouts, slow down. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was startled me so much that I literally slammed on the brake. And as I'm coming to the stop, I see this huge deer in the middle of the road. And I was like, wow. I mean, I believe that was God <laughs> now. I didn't know what it was, but I, it, I knew that I heard it. It wasn't in my head. And it was so loud that it came over the music and everything else that just shouted at me to slow down. Um, Hopefully you'll never be in a situation where you have to hear God's voice like that. <laughs> but um, nature, Psalm 19 talks us about how God speaks like his creation speaks. The voice of creation goes out every single day. You know, do we, when we look at creation, we can, we can, can, what can we glean for how nature is even speaking to us about God and who he is? Uh, songs. Have you ever had a song in the night? Like the past three days, I've woken up with the same song. Uh, that that, And then when I play the song, I'm like, oh my gosh, that song really speaks to my heart for where I'm at right now. So he speaks in a multitude of, multitude of ways. Sensations, things like maybe feeling tingling in God's presence or heat on your body or, um, or, or other ways. God speaks through other people. Um, you know, where somebody, have you ever had where somebody just said like, oh my gosh, like, thank you, God. Like, I just needed to hear what that person said. Like, and you knew that it was a message um, from God. And then the last one that I want to just mention today is the inner voice. We all, we have an inner voice within us that is kind of like spontaneous. When we have spontaneous thoughts and pictures in our mind, that's another very popular way that I believe all of us hear God's voice in this way, kind of spontaneous thoughts and pictures that light up upon our mind. And this is one of the main ways that I want to focus on today, this spontaneous um, inner voice in our head. In Mark Verkler's book, the main scripture God gave him to consistently hear God's voice is um, Habakkuk, verses uh, two, actually two, one through three. I'm going to read it again. And Mark, uh, in his book, if you get his book, he tells this whole story of, I mean, he was a pastor and everything. And he was like, he didn't know how to hear God's voice. Even as a pastor, even he went to seminary, he would ask people how to hear God's voice. What does it sound like? And no one could really explain it to him. And uh, so he's got a great story uh, there. And he, he was a... Um, one of those real analytical thinkers, you know, so he thinks and, and, and looks at things that with a critical eye when he's reading it and kind of judges it, you know, is this right or is this wrong? And, you know, so he's always engaging his mind, like, you know, in, in that kind of process. And, um, and I know a lot of us are like that too. But anyway, Habakkuk, this is he, God, he kept saying, God, you know, please, I got to find out how to hear your voice. And um, after many things, God led him to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, which reads, um, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. So from these verses, Mark um, came up with 
gleaned out of those verses um, four keys to hearing God's voice. The first one is where it said, I will stand at the guard post. I will stand at my watch. It's kind of like they're the the um they're there and they're they're standing. They're still. They're they're just being still. I will keep watch to see. Like they're they're watching to see. So they're there, they're they're watching. What what do you what are they going to see? And that's where um Mark really talks about, you know, when we look to fix our eyes on Jesus, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, if we want to hear his voice. He will speak to me. I will look to see what he will say to me. That's where we kind of tune into the, the spontaneity of the spirit, the, the spontaneity of the Holy Spirit, where, you know, it says like rivers of living water will flow through us. And then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision, write down the flow of flaw, the th- the flow of thoughts and pictures that light up on your heart and mind. You know, so, um, you know, God speaks to us through a flow, a spontaneous flow of pictures and thoughts that light up on our mind. And um, for an example of a picture, like if I say pink elephant, can you see a pink elephant in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. you know, so, you know, thinking of uh, that, like if, if I asked you to close your eyes, could you imagine a room in your house? Like, could you see that in your mind's eye? That's another, the reason why I'm asking you to do that is because some people think like, well, I don't see things. But if you can imagine a pink elephant or you can imagine what a room looks like in your house, you can see and that what we want then is for you then to be see, seeing what God wants to show you. And um, so those are kind of like the four keys. So the four keys simply stated are be still, kind of quiet yourself down so you can hear God's voice. Because when our head is running a million, million miles an hour, we cannot hear God's voice. And I think you guys know what I mean. Like if, you, if you're in one of those situations, you're like, well, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? And you cannot, it's, that's why we got to be quiet and still ourselves. We need to look for vision as we pray to keep our eyes on Jesus and then tune to spontaneity and recognize God's voice as spontaneous thoughts and pictures that light up on our mind. And uh, something that just popped into my mind, even as I was saying that as an example is, have you ever been like, you know, like, you're like, God, like, I'm really like, want an answer to this problem. And then later on in the day, suddenly, you just get this deposit, like, you know, plopped in your mind. And you're like, Oh, my gosh, that's the answer to what I was looking for. Um, So tuning to spontaneity and then writing down the flow of thoughts and pictures that light up on your mind. There's something key about writing, writing it down. Hearing God's voice, I know right now it just sounds like, okay, I'm not sure I understand this, but hearing God's voice is really that easy. It can be that easy. Everyone can do it by practicing these four steps. To be still, just say, you know, come Holy Spirit. Be still. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Tune to the Spirit of God within you. And then write down the flow of pictures and thoughts that light up on your mind. So a great way to practice this is to get a journal out and ask God a question. So today, two questions that we're going to look at is, Lord, do you love me? And the second question might be, um, how do you see me? Or uh, what would you like to say to me? And then when you start writing, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to take a, not right at this moment, but in a, in a few minutes, uh, we're going to actually take a couple minutes where we're going to ask you to journal. Uh, so when you start writing, you simply write down the flow of thoughts and pictures that Jesus gives to you. 
And as you're writing, don't pause or judge them. You can actually look at them later and then say, hey, was this God or not God? The second we do this, the second we stop to correct a spelling or, or, or we cut off the flow um, of spontaneity. Sometimes people think that uh, what they're writing is actually what they want to hear, you know, because God wants to say good things to us and he does tell us things that we want and need to hear. It's actually God speaking to you. Sometimes people confuse that like, oh, is this just me telling me what I want to hear? But no, it really is God. God wants to say nice things to you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves every single one of us. And he wants to talk to us personally. So uh, I want us all to, you know, that we will try, the, you know, try it. And we'll give you two minutes later to, dis, you know, to do this. Um, and, and then you can let me know if you have any questions. I am going to send out two videos this week to you that might be helpful in this process. And if you're listening and would like that information, just email me at info at Morse Dot org and just say send me the two videos so a question that I want to want to ask right now is um, how do we know if something's really God you know the best way to do that is to ask another believer you know maybe sh say look I was uh, journaling and I wanted to just check this out with you does this sound like the heart of God that's pretty much what we're asking we don't we're not asking them what they think, but instead we're asking them if their spirit witnesses to the spirit of God within you in what you wrote. You always want to do this with a believer. So, you know, we, you want to do this with a believer who's further along in your walk than uh, you are on your journey, or at least someone who's at the same stage. Messages from God that he gives us when he God's voice when he speaks to us messages from God will comfort encourage strengthen or build up that's that's the kinds of things that God speaks to his people some other helpful hints uh, to discern and know if something is from God is you know as I talked earlier just you, you have just had this impression like wow I really feel like I need to go uh, visit uh, Aunt Mary this week um, or a nudge uh, I feel like I need to call my daughter you know have you ever gotten those kind of nudges and things that come from God they're aligned with the written word they're aligned with what God has already said so God isn't going to tell you to do something that contradicts scripture like God's not going to say hey I want you to go have an affair like, I mean, I, that's an outrageous thing. Like, God wouldn't say that. <laughs> you know, God wants us to be faithful to our partners and our, our um, spouse, to our spouses. Another uh, way is sometimes God might uh, conv uh, convict us of something, but God will not condemn us. That God does not condemn. He convicts the enemy, the evil one. He's the one that condemns. You know, and think about this. If you ever have those uh, thoughts in your head where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm such a loser or this or that, and you know, like, you, you know, that especially those who have those voices that you're hearing, that's from the enemy. You know, so if you hear those voices, you can hear God's voice because God speaks to you too. And uh, so hopefully you, you kind of get that example a little bit. Now, the most common things uh, that, that prevent us from hearing God, there, there are a couple things that prevent us from hearing God, and it's really being uh, distracted, uh, being concerned or worried. Um, you know, we have to be really at that at place of rest with, with God where we can just quiet our spirit. We can take, you know, five minutes to be alone and know that, you know, everything's going to be okay while we, why we do that. So again, the four steps are we're going to be still and quiet ourselves in the Lord. So we're going to be still. We're going to look for vision. We're going to fix our eyes. We're going to focus on Jesus. We're going to get present to him being with us. 
And uh, sometimes, you know, people even imagine, you know, it's scripture says that he's at our right hand, that he's there with us. Uh, that's how David saw him. The right, you know, the Lord is constantly at my right hand. So he's, you. it's okay for you to envision God there. Um, the other day I was doing my quiet time. Dave walked in the room. There was a chair in front of me. I was like, well, Jesus is sitting there. You know, Jesus is, <laughs> is there. So whatever, whatever you do, he is there. Uh, God's voice then will come as those spontaneous pictures or thoughts and then just start writing them down. And I will say that many times the flow of thoughts will not come until you actually start writing. So as we learn to intentionally do this, uh, you will become more and more aware of God's presence. You'll become more aware of spontaneous thoughts even during the day that pop into your mind. And um, as I mentioned earlier, for instance, somebody's name that comes or you like you get this you know, like, hey, I've got to go do this. Uh, my husband was telling me this morning that he was doing his run and, and God said, go talk to, you know, one of our neighbors. And that's what he did. So even during his run, it's like, oh, you want me to stop my run and go do this? He's like, yeah, I want you to do that. So, you know, once you get in connected with the spontaneous flow, you'll start to hear God just in the midst of things, cooking dinner and doing other things. Okay, so in a moment, we're going to play some quiet music in the background. We're going to do this for about two minutes. So I'm going to ask that, especially for you guys that are online, I really want you to try this out. So I suggest that uh, you get a, a piece of paper and something to write with. And if you need to do that, just pause the video for a moment. So you can pause the video and go do that. And then after you're ready, uh, just come back and turn the video back on. If you're driving, don't worry about it. You can do this later or, you know, if you're just not able to do that now. Okay, so once you have your paper and your pen, the, there's going to be uh, two questions that we're going to look at today. The first one is we're going to ask God, what do you want to say to me, God? The second question is, what do you want to say to us today, the body of Christ? So the two questions are, the first is, what do you want to say to me, God? You can write that down. The second is, what do you want to say to us? So we're going to take a moment and then start to actually answer those questions. And as we do that, again, we're going to quiet our spirits, fix our eyes on Jesus, tune to spontaneity, and write down the flow of thoughts and any pictures that God gives us. For some of us, um, rewriting the question and hearing yourself ask it, like literally hear yourself in your head say, you know, what do you want to say to me, God? Because that's how God, that's the voice that God's going to use to speak back to you. Um, all right. So let's just take a moment right now. We're going to put on two minutes of quiet music so that you can do this. So uh, now uh, take a moment and answer those questions.
right, now uh, that we've done that, uh, we we actually have uh, two people in here that uh, took some time to do this exercise, and they are going to come up here. Peter and Dave are going to come up here and share uh, what God just spoke to them. So uh, come on up, Peter, and share what God shared with you. I feel like God uh, spoke to me this morning um, for me to, to be strong and don't give up. And I feel like he's saying to us this morning, um, just feel like he gave me the image of how a phone used to be and how it was always plugged in. The, the old phones, the old home phones, and now they're mobile and they can go anywhere. And I feel like um, God said, um, that we're, we're, the church is becoming like a mobile phone. We can go anywhere. And we're connected to a different power source. Uh, antennas, we can go anywhere, but we still need to be plugged into the source eventually. So we can't give up being plugged into the source. Um, so take that or leave it. I feel like that's what he's speaking. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What a great word. Okay, Dave, uh, come on up and share what God said to you. So I felt like God said this to both me and to others. Um, I needed to hear this too. I mean, this was very timely for me for sure. He says, I'm proud of you, even if you're not. I love you. No matter what's going on or how busy you are, slow down and spend time with me. And I feel like he's said this last one for the body as well. I mean, like if the other ones were really more for me, uh, I think this last one is for all of us. I'm always here. When you're tired, lonely, or upset, or even when you're not, I'm always here for you. I feel like that's what he said. Amen. Amen. And one of the things I felt like God said to me that was for all of us is that he just said the brightest spot of his day is when his kids pause and want to talk to him. That's the, that's the brightest spot. So I, pr I pray that, you know, the best way we can bless God today is by today and every day is giving him time where we can pause and, and spend some time with him and share our hearts and listen for what he wants to say back to us. All right, so uh, thank you guys. I hope that you all got something too, or you know, you'll do it a little bit later on. And uh, you know, the thing about it is, is uh, when we do share these things, that anything that you write, everything that you write, um, it, it really should be encouraging comforting or building others up if it's not it's probably not god uh, so that's important to know mark's uh, book is a great resource and tool i did not do it justice at all and uh it's an amazing uh, book that i believe will will help the best way to apply this message is to practice this for five minutes each day ask me for uh, additional help if you like you know god loves you. He loves you so much, each and every one of you, even more than you can possibly hope for or imagine. His love is so transformational that it can change the trajectory of our very lives forever. You know, one word from God can make an entire difference in our day. He sent his one and only son to tell us about how much he loved us and he still wants to talk to us today. So God wants to speak with you every day. He 
will make time for you in a moment's notice. He will do that in a moment's notice. If you say, God, I really need to hear from you right now, he will make time for you. (laughs) God is speaking, and he will continue to speak every day. Are we taking time to listen to Jesus' voice? That's the most important voice out of all the voices that we could even hear from. Are we taking time to hear Jesus' voice each day? Learning to tune to, to the flow of the Holy Spirit is foundational. This is foundational. Hearing God's voice, this is why this is so important. Hearing God's voice is foundational to everything else that we do in our Christian life. Everything. To everything. It will help us become better disciples um, of Jesus. And we. it's just so foundational. So the question is, is, are we listening? Are we listening? Let's pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that you say your sheep hear your voice and and that you speak to us regularly. Lord, I pray that right now that any doubt that you are speaking to people, that you will break that off of anyone right now if they're like, okay, this this isn't working for me or it doesn't work for me. Lord, we just pray that you break that off right now because that is not you. And we know that you want to speak tender mercies. You want to speak tender things and loving things and build us up, Lord, uh, and and encourage us on the things that uh, we are doing, Lord. So we just thank you that you are a good, good father and you say and speak good things to your children. Lord, uh, we pray that each uh, day that we're going to grow in hearing your voice. We're going to grow uh, through practicing of journaling. We're going to grow in hearing your voice as we, um, you know, during the, during the day, we'll be like, oh my gosh, I just got a spontaneous thought. Like, wow, thank you, God. Um, and you knew it was from him. So have us just tune more into you, Lord. Let us be more aware of your presence. You know, scripture does tell us that we should pray, um, you know, pray without ceasing. And that's just communicating with you, God. Um, So we just thank you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in, through, and among us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we go from here today, uh, please know that God loves you more than you can even think of or imagine, and that God gave of his very self so that he could have a personal relationship with you. He died on the cross so to take away our sins so that we could have an open relationship with him. And if you do not know him and you want to hear his sweet voice, all you have to do is invite him into your heart and just let him know, like, okay, God. I, I recognize that you are real, that you are the one who came and lived and died for me and for my sins, for your sins, right? That's what he did so that we could have this personal relationship with the living God so that we could partner with him. And all we, all we have to do is just say, you know what? I believe and I invite you into my heart. You know, I, I, can, I confess, you know, that I have broken, I have not like, you know, lived the life you've wanted me to live and you can confess anything that, you know, you that's on your heart to, to do that and just say, please come, I, I come into my life. And, and um, that's kind of where we just do that kind of repent and believe. And I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord and Savior and he will come in. So I pray that if, uh, if that's you, that you've done that today. And, and uh, if so, you know, this is your spiritual birthday. Um, so for us, as we go, let us go with uh, just our open, to, open hearts wide to receive the love, the grace, and the mercy, and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we go out into the world, let us hear his voice and go encourage others on the path. Amen. Some points to remember. Being still and quieting ourselves will help us better hear God's voice. We should look for vision, keeping focused on Jesus when we pray. We can recognize God's voice as spontaneous thoughts and pictures. We should write down the flow of thoughts and pictures God gives us. What does God want to say to you today? Are we taking time to tune in to hear Jesus' voice? God is speaking. Are we listening? Who is God leading you to share Jesus with this week? We're glad you stopped by today. Have you made a commitment to Jesus today, or would you like to? Do you want someone to talk to or pray with you today? Contact us at prayer at morschapel.org. Let us help you with your next steps with Jesus. Contact us at info at morschapel.org. Thanks for listening to the message. Click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates. We are located at 392 Blake Road, off Blue Ball Road, in Elkton, Maryland. Service times are 8.30 a.m. online and 9.30 and 11 a.m. live. For more information, please visit www.morsechapel.org.